Hello and welcome to video 5 in my Modelling in Maya series. What we have now is a very basic mannequin style model, but this has given us a great starting point for this base mesh. What we're going to do now is start to add more details to the model. This will help to define the anatomy while also making her better suited for rigging and animation. So in this video, let's start working more on her torso. Really quick question for you now. How would you like to help support the future of this channel and keep these videos free? Well, there are a few options. One would be to simply treat me to a coffee at my coffee page as a quick and easy thank you. You could also grab something from the Ant CGI store or one of my other online stores like Cubebrush and Gumroad. This is where you will also find the course files that go with this course so you can download them and follow along. However, for as little as 99p a month, you could join the Ant CGI Club. There are a few ways you can join. You could head over to my Patreon or Coffee pages, or alternatively, simply hit that Join button below this video. In short, the more support I get, the more time I can dedicate to creating more high quality content just for you. To get more information on how you can help, follow the link on the screen or in the description below. OK, now that's out of the way, let's get on with the video. So here we have the current base mesh. I'll just press Ctrl and Space to switch to full screen mode. We have symmetry enabled, but as you can see, as we move around the edges, some aren't being highlighted on the opposite side. So the current symmetry settings aren't working. We know this model is symmetrical. So what we could do is tell Maya to work off the model's topology rather than using the world space orientations and directions. First, select an edge down the middle of the model to help dictate the symmetry plane. Now hold Ctrl and Shift and then right click to bring up the marking menu. Go up to symmetry and then over to topology. That's working now, but to be honest, I'm not sure how long it will work for, so I have another way I prefer to work. First, disable symmetry. And now delete half the model. Select the half that's left and go to Edit, Duplicate Special and open the options. I'll reset this. What we're going to do is duplicate the model, but flip it to create the opposite side. To do this, just set the first scale option, which is the x-axis, to minus one, so it will flip the model across the x-axis. What we will also need to do is change geometry type to instance. This will simply create an instance of the original model. So it's like a reflection in a mirror, meaning any changes we do to the original will be applied to the instance too and vice versa. Click Apply. So what's happened is, this has mirrored across the object's axis. So we need to change that. So delete this. We can see the pivot point, or the axis for this model, is over here. Press Insert to go to Pivot Editing Mode. And now, holding X, move the pivot to the middle of the scene. Holding X will snap it to the grid. OK, apply this again. And that's better, perfectly positioned. The only issue is, we have an obvious seam down her middle now, but I can live with that to be honest while we're working, just so I've got a more stable, symmetrical model to refer to. You see, we can edit one side, and it also affects the other. So, let's start by adding an edge loop down the centre of her chest and follow this under her breast, up to her armpit and over her shoulder, ending it at the middle of the model. Now collapse these edges to remove the triangles. We can use this now to add a bit more of a crease and also soften the deltoid too. Let's adjust the shape a little now. 
Maybe enable tweak mode again for this. Now we need to add more definition to her stomach area and her ribs. So we ideally need an edge loop running down here and then around her back. Select the edges that run in the direction we need. Something like this. Now use Connect Component to add a new edge loop. We have the edges now, but we also have a lot of triangles, so we need to convert these into quads where possible. So let's start by triangulating these end gons. What we need to do now is rotate these edges so they follow the flow of the edge loop. So they need to run above and below these triangles. Hold down shift and right click to bring up the marking menu. Go to flip spin edge and we want to spin this forwards. That's now running in the right direction. We can do the same above now. This time though, we can simply hold Ctrl and Alt and then use the arrow keys to spin the edge for us. We can now delete these edges here to turn this into a quad. And also delete these. And that's cleaned up now. We have the same issue here, so we can repeat the process. First, triangulate the end gons above and below the triangles. Now spin or flip the edges so they run parallel. Actually, let's spin this one too, so we get the right flow of edges along here. And spin this edge. So now you see we are actually redirecting the flow of the edges here. Yes, we have some triangles, but we will come back to those later. We have some more cleanup to do at the back here. Let's isolate this side of the model for now. And follow the same process, triangulating it first and then reworking the flow of edges. So we need this to join here with the edge loops on the back. Let's try adjusting the edges here. That's better. Now let's continue this to the middle of the model. And clean this up here. OK, so we have a nice flow of edges here, and it's important that the edge loops follow the natural shapes and forms of the body, so the model will deform in a more predictable way. If you're clever enough, you can achieve a subtle hint of the muscles moving beneath the surface of the skin. So it's worth spending the time to do this now, although we will be doing a deformation test towards the end of the course. We do have a few triangles now, but this doesn't concern me, because I know that as we work, there will be other edge loops that we will add that will help to remove these. Let's add a quick edge loop to her stomach area. You will see that as I work, I do tend to get distracted, so I'll move from area to area, so I apologise for that. I think it's probably part of my thinking process. I'll take a quick break, work on one area, and then come back to the original area. So, we can collapse these edges here to remove this triangle. Let's connect these here, and then collapse the new edge to turn these into quads. And that's changed the flow of edges now, so they run down to the thigh. And repeat this above. Let's do some reshaping now. If you want to relax an area without using the sculpting tools, you can use the Average Vertices tool instead. Right, let's bring back the image planes and the opposite side. And isolate the full model this time. Let's switch to default lighting so we can see the back a little better. And adjust the shape. Make sure you use reference as you rework the overall shape. Also, don't be tempted to add in more edge loops if you don't need them. We want to keep this model as light as possible. 
Right, let's add some clavicle definition. We should use the model sheet for this. So we can move these vertices down to follow the same line. And adjust it from the side too. We now need another edge loop running above it so we can define the clavicle more. So let's connect these edges here and collapse this triangle. We can pull these down now to create the recess and add that subtle definition. Make sure you check from all angles, even above. Okay, so it looks like we have an open edge loop here. So let's follow this up to the neck. We will need this later anyway. And collapse that. We can use that now to add the recess between the clavicle bones. And we can adjust the shape more now we have that extra topology, helping us to add a bit more definition. Right, let's delete the history and focus on her back. Let's add a new edge loop down her spine. I'm going to simplify things a bit first. It's better to work with fewer polygons when you can. Maybe remove this edge ring here. Spin this edge here. And this one. This needs a bit more reshaping, I think. It looks like the topology on the hip needs reworking. I want it to flow more around the back. You see, this is why I like working this way. It's like a puzzle, working out the best way to get the edges to flow while avoiding triangles and n-gons. So let's flip this edge and connect these. Okay, this isn't right. Let's collapse this and this. And now we can follow this triangle around to the middle of the model and turn this into a quad. Done. Right, another quick clean. And let's relax the topology again too. It's worth doing this from time to time just to even everything out. We need to fill out her back too. Okay, now let's add some definition to her shoulders. We need to add an edge loop across the top here to help define the topology of her shoulder blades or scapulars. Let's clean this up now. And time to adjust the shape again. We want the edge loops to flow down towards her buttocks, like the latissimus dorsi and trapezius muscles. Although it's important to say that this won't be the final topology. Think of what we're doing now as a first pass. And what you'll see happen is things will change as we start to work on other areas like her arms and her legs. These will all end up influencing each other. Also, don't try and get each and every muscle mapped out. All we want on this model is a hint of the muscles beneath the skin. And we are using edge loops to map them out, which will help with how she will eventually deform when animated. Alright, let's move on and work on her buttocks. Let's start with an edge loop around her thigh, which we can use to add more of a crease here. So we have this pole here which is causing a nasty pinch. Maybe try adding a loop here and down the inner thigh too. If you need to have a pull, try to hide it where possible or make sure it's not in an area that deforms a lot. Collapse these. So that's moved but it's still noticeable. Actually, this would flow better 
if the edge loop came down this way instead. So let's add one. And collapse these. OK, that's better. This is a little awkward here though. Actually, let's create another loop running down. And tidy that up. So this looks better. Let's make this flow down onto the leg. We can try collapsing these now. Uh, no, let's undo that. We need that topology for the crease. Let's adjust this here. Right, let's rethink. Maybe we can collapse this one edge. Create a new loop down here. And now use that to turn the triangle into a quad. OK, much better. Right, let's spend some time adjusting the shape. We need to separate these edges here as they are too close and this is causing a crease or an angle. Whereas we know this area needs to be smooth. Alright, the topology is looking better here. Let's relax it. We can work with this topology now. Let's check the model sheet. So this needs filling out. And this needs raising. Now this just looks like a bad implant. We need to fix this. OK, now relax again. And now let's look at the front. Let's try another edge loop here. And collapse this. Add another loop here. And flip this edge. Again, it's all trial and error. Just experimenting with edge flows and just seeing what works. Let's collapse this now. It looks like there's too much topology in this area. We need to remove the triangle. So create a new edge loop running alongside it and around the front. Collapse the start and turn this into a quad. Let's adjust the shape again. So we have this area on her hip. We should see if we can reroute the edge flow here so it runs towards her back instead. Let's turn this into two triangles. We could try and connect it to this open edge here. Create an edge loop running to it. And clean up the start so it's now a quad. OK, so we have a triangle. Let's collapse this and flip this. Ah, right, so let's see if we can make this meet the open edge down here where the end gone is. I keep saying open edge and what I'm referring to is an edge with no connections like this. So new edge loop here, turn this into a quad, collapse this, triangulate this, and we can turn this into two quads. OK. Let's add a little bit more definition into her back. So we need a new edge loop here, running down to the end gone at the base of her spine. 
we can connect it to this open edge. Now we need to clean this up so the edge ring runs up towards her armpit. Let's run this into the middle of the model. Triangulate here. Let's rework the topology in this area. There's a triangle here. Let's collapse this edge and see if we can move it. Connect these above it and turn it into a quad. And reroute this edge loop so it meets the open edge below, here. Okay, good. Now we need to relax the area. Now you don't need to just use the relax tool. Feel free to also use the other sculpting tools to help with reshaping larger areas. Like this. OK, let's move back up to the shoulders and add in the deltoid muscle. So we need an edge loop around here to help us define it. Actually, maybe a bit further back. And let's clean these up. I think you get the idea with this process now. We want this edge loop to work its way around to the front. So create a new edge here. We can connect that back to the first one. And again, clean it up. We can try adding a new edge loop here. Maybe we can use this to help shape the scapula or shoulder blade area. OK, let's have a look. We could do with another edge loop running under the armpit. So we can remove this triangle here. And here. Let's experiment with this here. No, that's not working. Back to the scapula. So, we need another loop on the inside. And we can connect that to the one leading in from the deltoid. So create another cut here. Collapse this. And these to help change the edge loop's direction. We can use this now to add in some of the shoulder blade shape. OK, let's sort out the shoulder. We might have to experiment a little bit here. Maybe cut here. Adjust these. Collapse these two. Yeah, so maybe that doesn't work. What if we add an edge loop here? Collapse this, and this, extend this over here, and let's flip this. Maybe cut along here. OK, we can claw back some quads here, but that leaves us with a triangle. But to be honest, I feel like the model is getting too dense here anyway, so we can collapse this edge ring. That's looking cleaner.
Ah, there's this issue here. We can quickly turn this into quads. A few more tweaks. OK, so we have two open edges here, but we can easily connect them. Cut over here and collapse these edges. Perfect. Let's rework this shoulder area. I'm trying to find a way to go over all this without it being repetitive and boring, and also not just to time lapse it all, so bear with me. I'm hoping that you are seeing some of the basic techniques I use and that they're helpful. I basically try something and see if it works. If not, I try something else. It's just about reworking the topology to get the best flow of edges. Once you get into the workflow, you will find that you can fly through these models. OK, that's much better. Quickly delete the history. We've done a lot of work there, so time to relax the topology. Now, let's switch to the default material so we can see the model properly. Time to clean up the end guns on the shoulder. We can do it quickly with another cut along here. And collapse these edges here. And it makes a nice loop around the top of the shoulder. Don't get too focused on adding lots of detail at this stage. As I said earlier, think of this as a first pass to get the base shapes and forms in. And also clean up the topology a little where possible. I'm going to collapse these edges here because I'm concerned that the topology is getting too dense around the back. We could maybe do this one too. Yep, that works. Ah, we have a triangle here. Oh no, that was a quad. Right, adjust the shape more. We can simplify here too. So it's not all about adding, you have to stay on top of optimising too. I think we need to compare with the model sheet again now to make sure it fits. It's around this stage when you need to be checking the reference material really, because there are some angles that the model sheets just don't cover. OK, let's tackle this end gone here. Maybe cut here. And then we'll collapse this. So that's moved the end gone up here, but we can now use that as we add detail to the arm. Time to clean up and relax the topology again. So what else? I don't really like the topology on the armpit here. Let's cut along here.
move these down a little. We can see this now, so we can triangulate it. Let's try this. Okay, we have a nasty pole here. Hmm. Let's try flipping this edge. Okay, maybe undo that. What if we collapse this instead? We have a triangle here now. Maybe we can add a loop which runs onto the arm to help. Yeah, that looks better, and we can use that in the next video when we work on the arm. So all I'm going to do now is work my way around adjusting the shapes and forms. We could adjust the topology here on her back too. Ok, I think we've done enough on her torso for now. As mentioned, this is just the first pass, so we will come back and refine it later. I appreciate it does still need work. What you will find though is you almost need the other elements to be brought up to the same level before you can continue with it. So what I'm going to do is leave the torso here, and in the next video let's move on and add in the arm and hand detail. Ok, that's another video over. Thanks for watching right to the end, and make sure you also check out some of the other free videos and courses that I have available. You can find links to all these on the screen now, and in the description below. Remember, to help support future content and keep these videos free, visit the Ant CGI store, or join the Ant CGI club. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation for these videos, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? Again, the link is on the screen now, and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, this is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.